You guys can obviously tell I'm very big on the Final Fantasy franchise. I've always been big with JRPGs, I've sort of been raised on them. I've played Final Fantasies 1 through 3. I never touched a Super Nintendo one, so even though I've always watched Let's Plays on them. And I've... I also have a lot of Super Nintendo Let's Plays. I mean, uh... Games that I've bought. Like Chrono Trigger and the Breath of Fire series. But... I did 7 through 10. I played those games. Not completely, but I've played them. And I have 13 right now, which... I really don't like. But 9's the most recent one that I've been playing through. I've really went extensively from, I guess, June through September, then I've taken a break. I do that a lot. And so far, 9 is really good. The combat feels a lot more balanced in 9 than it did with 7 in terms of the fact that each character is unique. There's a, just like in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, there's this ability thing where you can basically customize everyone with a certain ability. They get it through weapons, armors, and accessories, which Unlike with 7, where there's only 3, the weapon, the armor, and the accessory, you got stuff for the head, the arms, the legs, the body, torso, I guess. You got a lot of different things. I think up to 6. So you can... any level up abilities and gain some that you can keep with you after you're done using that equipment. So it makes sure that you equip weapons, uh, equipment, uh, not just based on the stats, but also the abilities you can take and keep with you and the ones that are exclusive just to that weapon or armor or accessory. It keeps things very interesting. And I know I've said that like a hundred times right now, but that's just how it goes. I didn't like the trance system because it never worked when I wanted it to work. It's not like with the limits where there's an element of control that you can have with it. Here it's just you transform, some of your abilities get upgraded, you get some new abilities, your stats kind of expand a little exponentially, but that's for a few turns and you go back to your normal self. Not very voluntary, not very useful at times. Sometimes it kind of fucks you up. Also, I felt that a lot of times in the game, the difficulty just comes with whether or not you buy enough items. Those moogles really determine everything more than anything else. I feel like if you run out of resources, that's really, money-wise, that's really what's going to end your shit. Because other than that, the game isn't very challenging. The first few Final Fantasy games were really fucking challenging. I'm still challenged by them. But, this shit was like, it wasn't hard because it was my fault, it's hard because the difficulty range was kind of bipolar. One boss would be really fucking easy, but then you had a move that would fuck you up, or others would be like a hellhole, but you throw in like a potion instead. That's kind of how it works. As for the characters, well, besides the fact that they're all unique, no matter how you equip them, both the mages, Dagger and Eagle, are going to be white mages and summoners. Phoebe's always going to be the black mage. Steiner's always going to be the knight. Uh, I guess Zidane's always going to be the thief. 
As for the other characters, yeah, I'm not going to mention them. But they have their moments. They just kind of seem sidelined. Really with the game, with kind of issues I was going through at the time, I really appreciated nihilistic philosophical themes that it was trying to get across. Especially with the character BB. Where a lot of philosophical RPGs like the Chrono series try too hard and definitely fail, this one really does succeed in a non pretentious way to cover things like nihilism, like essentially the dread of mortality, the like questions of who you are, where you come from fear and everything, hopelessness, dread, sibling rivalry, uh, the romance was thrown together though, going with uh, Zidane Dagger, I didn't really understand it, alright, so Zidane gets, considers that Dagger's hot, it's cute to romance. Okay, as a character, he's cool and badass since he's supposed to be a rock star from. Well, not a rock star, rock star, but something kind of like that. Centered in a city. in the artsy part of the city. He's. has all these cocky elements to his character. He's Locke mixed with Squall. Except more upbeat, more goofy. A lot of people say he's like more of a sidekick than anything else, but there's a lot of depth to his characters. He has a lot of struggles in terms of his atomism, not knowing where he comes from, having to deal with who he really is when he does find out, and it's actually kind of epic the way it comes across, although a little too fast and a little too rushed. It almost sort of jumps the shark in a way. If they didn't hint it out and executed it out of the blue, which they did kind of hint it out. And they try to brace you for that shit, so it all flows that way. And it does explain a lot of the questions in the series. The world of Gaia, in a way, only one sort of place, only one continent is fully interesting. And the others are just there for specific parts of the games. They have their visuals, they have their moments, but they're not as budding as the Mist continent. That's a continent with all the life in it, where the others just feel like ruins or remnants or places where they're just hiding from the powerful monsters that exist. Sort of lifeless, sort of dry. In a way, Nine was kind of their way of introducing a really interesting world, but with all the themes and all the storylines and all these things that they try to get across with it, it kind of it's kind of hit or miss in a way. It doesn't know what it's trying to be. But at the same time, it comes off as a game where I feel like if circumstances were different, this would have been my favorite Final Fantasy game of at least the PlayStation era. I haven't played 6 yet, I haven't played 4 yet, I haven't played 5 yet, but it's definitely up there. One thing I like that they did with 9 is they didn't want to make this a teenage thing. It, it wasn't like 8 where it's where everyone's like the same age range and shit like that. You get a lot of different age ranges, a lot of different, I guess, very diverse casts in a way. Kind of like 7 but in a whole nother level. 
it's too bad that a lot of the characters were more annoying and just there, but, uh, they're all unique, and they're all trying. My favorite was the Dragoon chick, the guy, the girl that was kind of a Lancer, she's like, came from Final Fantasy IV, because I found her very useful in battles up until I hadn't used her forever and her stats started getting really weak. But I think I could get around that, since I really do like her abilities and things of that nature. It's really too bad that, uh, this game didn't sell as much as 7, 8, and 10 did because what it was trying was pretty fucking big. In terms of all the themes, storylines, immersion, Kucha is a badass villain, bar none. The villain that comes after him was hinted, but again, like anything else, these elements were kind of thrown together awkwardly, but... It, it was going for something big. I know that. It was essentially a tribute to all the previous Final Fantasies. That's why a lot of names from past Final Fantasy games were placed on there. But essentially it was everyone's sort of favorite Final Fantasy game in terms of the development team, and I can't blame them. It's a really good game in terms of gameplay. And all these other things. I wish there was a little more to it. With 7, I feel like there's a lot more replay value. Even now, I think that I could play 7 again just so I could see if I, what would happen if I did things a lot differently. I know that my final party could have been a lot better if I had made different choices. But, Alas, that's why, that's why there is all these things put together so that you can play the game again and there is that extra level of value. It's not present in 9 because a lot of mini games are fucking terrible. 7 had some terrible mini games, but at least they were amusing to look at. It was fun seeing the snowboarding shit even though I kept fucking up. Uh, the chokeable racing thing was catchy and was visually hypnotizing. I think uh, someone was on a bad LSD trip. Uh, but it was cool nonetheless. That card game was a total tangent. It was really useless. I kept getting my ass beat, but when I finally learned the rules of the game, I was just killing everyone. It's like, no, there was no challenge. I could have the worst fucking cards and I keep winning. So the card game was just a tribute to Final Fantasy VIII. I think that's VIII's only mini game, but it wasn't worth shit. And if you've seen my Tumblr, you already know what I think about VIII. Uh, a lot of people hate on Squall, but I actually liked him as a protagonist. The gameplay wasn't to my liking. And it felt more like aesthetics were being placed above the actual storyline and the core elements of the game. Because they really didn't try to make everything cinematically and, I guess, visually and personality-wise, like an old-school 60s, 50s, 40s sort of vintage movie. I felt that Squall was more of a James Dean, in a way. A lot of those characters did kind of fit that archetype. So aesthetically, that was a big thing. Everything else just took a step down, and a significant step down because I hated everything else. Anyways, this is Mr. Wonka 7. I recommend Final Fantasy 9 if you haven't tried it. And, uh, suck my dick. <laughs>